Listen, Lingxia comes out this week, and a lot of people are speculating about how good she really, really is, especially from people who have been talking about it in the beta tests, right? But to me, the answer might be a little bit simple. And it all comes down to, as I've said before, what you're gaining from this banner. And to be honest, it looks like we might have already gained it. So we're going to talk about if you should summon Relinksha in Honkai Star Rail. But before we get into that, make sure to like, comment, subscribe. Don't forget to check out all the wonderful, you know, links down in the description. And of course, check out Gamersubs. Use code Tystra for 10% off. Y'all, we just had a surprise drop. We had a surprise drop of a new tub art for Grandpa's Ashes called Grandma's Ashes. And it just dropped today. So you're getting the scoop right now. So make sure you go to gamersubs.gg, use code Tystra for 10% off. But without any further delay, let's go ahead and talk about the Lingsha banner. Now, first things first, I want to talk about the four stars because the four stars are always important to a banner. Why? Well, because of the fact that you're going to be seeing them the most. And if you can use them, then that's great. But if we already got them, then kind of causes a little bit of a dilemma, right? Because some people are collectors and some people don't really need the actual, you know, constellations. So let's dive in. First things first, let's talk about Natasha. Now, Natasha and OG. Natasha, grandma, right? Uh, hot grandma, but at the same time, she's been here for a very, very long time. She's a good healer. Good, not great. Um, and honestly, like sometimes I prefer having her as a healer more than Bailu. And Bailu is the five star that came out alongside Natasha. Um, because Natasha at C6 is actually pretty dang good. Honestly, pretty dang good. Um, at the C6, it's Natasha basic attack deals uh, additional physical damage uh, equal to 40% of her max HP. So she can hold her own, right? And then you also have at the at the E4, after being attacked, regenerates five ener extra energy, uh, especially if, you know, the enemy has a little bit of a hard on for, you know, attacking your healer, AKA hot ass Natasha, right? But Natasha's healing capabilities to me are a little bit outdated now, especially with another unit that we're gonna be talking about here in a little bit, right? And of course, in this banner, if you're summoning on this banner, you're going for Linksha, who actually is a healer as well. So to me, I feel like if, you, if you're summoning on this banner to get Natasha, you're summoning for the wrong person anyway. And if you're summoning for Linksha, you're not gonna really need Natasha. I feel like HSR kind of really does this all the time in regards to like, oh, you could get this lesser unit or you could get the better unit. And I understand why they do it because if you, let's say, don't pull Linksha, you at least got a healer in Natasha, right? So that's always good. Now, let's go ahead and talk about Gwenyphen. Now, Gwenyphen, to me, is kind of a hit or miss. It depends on how you're feeling about Nihility teams. I love Nihility teams, so to me, I really do like her. She's a fire damage capabilities. Uh, she inflicts burn, which is always fantastic, and has a lot of different, like, uses in general in regards to your nihility team however there's so many nihility units that you don't entirely need need her right i think she's one of the better ones in fact i haven't checked her tier list in a while so let's check to see where she ranks in the tier list where is she okay so when i is at tier two right not bad that's that's in the middle that's not bad let's see how many nihility units are above her so we have pella which is Absolutely true. Pella is a fantastic four-star Nihility unit, so I would definitely say uh, she outranks outranks Gwenyphen by, uh, in my opinion, a better margin, right? Uh, you got Kafka, Black Swan, obviously five-star, so it makes sense. Um, let's see, who else do we got here? Do -do 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 -do. Uh, Jiaocho, of course, Jiaocho, right? Uh, you got Akron, of course, makes sense. So uh, let's see how many are below her. So nihility units. I might have missed a few, so don't 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 blame me in the in the in the comments. Uh, Sampo right there. Uh, yeah, Sampo. Wow. Wait, really? I feel like we're miss like I definitely missed a few nihility units to be honest, or maybe I just don't under truly understand how many nihility units we actually. Oh wait, yeah, there's. There's our boy right there. I forgot he's in the same tier. Our boy, Luca. That's who I was missing. And of course, Silverwolf. I forgot about Silverwolf. 
So, but Gwenaifin's in the middle. Now, in my opinion, when you look at this tier list, right? Because you have a bunch of different units, but if you're going for five-star Nihility units or just Nihility units in general, you do want the five stars and you want someone like Akron because Akron is insanely powerful. So that's just my opinion. Let's talk about Misha. Misha is an oddball, right? In my opinion, Misha is an oddball because I don't think Misha is that good. Like, where's Misha ranked on here? Yeah, Misha's tier four. So I'm not the only one that thinks that Misha is an oddball. Misha is just not a great destruction unit. When I tested Misha out, uh, it left a lot to be desired. I, it's it's weird. So let's let's look over his his kit and we'll talk about it. Uh, has three hits per action by default. First, uses one hit to deal ice damage equal to sixty percent of Misha's attack to a single target enemy. Then the rest of the of the hits each deal ice damage equal to sixty percent of Misha's attack to a single random enemy. Just before each hit lands, there's a 20% base chance to freeze the target. Freeze is good, so it's not that it's freeze, but it just is... That's the ultimate, right? The skill increases the hits per action for Misha's next ultimate by one hit. Deals ice damage equal to 200% of Misha's attack to a single target enemy. And ice damage equal to 80% of Misha's attack to adjacent targets. Now... This could be good. However, the only thing is that nine times out of 10, you're only getting two hits anyway, like extra for this. If you built your Misha correctly, because your energy is going to be like perfectly fine to grab. Like you'll get your ultimate really quickly in my personal opinion. So yeah, you do have this as well for the talent. Whenever an ally consumes one skill point, Misha's next ultimate deals one more hit per action but yeah i don't think you're gonna be maxing out the 10 hits per se uh maybe if this was before when we had jing yuan and all that you could see 10 hits being used consistently but i don't think that's gonna be the case and not only that but like with jing yuan the hits that get that get stacked are for another attack that happens within the turn and it's based off of uh like you get three points for your skill one point for your normal attack right so there's that so i think misha just kind of falls off especially with other destruction units really kind of being better right talk about lingsha i want to go over lingsha's stuff really quick um and we're just going to go over the base the base stuff we're not going to go over any traces or anything like that so let's just dive in really quick uh fire damage or fire abundance right fire abundance uh, normal attack deals fire damage, of course. Got the skill. Deals fire damage equal to 70% of Leech's attack to all enemies at, at the same time. Restores HP equal to 13.2% of Leech's attack. Plus 373 to all allies. Uh, Fuyun's action advances by 20%. Uh, we're going to get into Fuyun here in a little bit. Uh, ultimate inflicts B-Fog on all enemies while in B-Fog. Uh, targets receive 22.5% increased break damage lasting for two turns. Deals fire damage equal to 135% of Lingsha's attack to all enemies, and at the same time, restores HP equal to 11.2% of Lingsha's attack plus 320 to all allies. Fuyun's adva uh, action advances by 100%. Then you got the talent. When it using skill, summons Fuyun uh, with the initial speed of 90 and an uh, initial action count of 3. When taking action, Fuyun launches follow-up attacks, dealing fire damage equal to 65.6% of Lingsha's attack to all enemies. Additionally, deals fire damage equal to 66% of Lingsha's attack to a single random enemy. And this damage prioritizes targets that have toughness greater than zero and fire weakness. Dispels one debuff from all allies and restores HP equal to 11.2% of Lingsha's attack plus 320. Fuyun's action count can accumulate up to five. When the action count reaches zero of when Lingsha is knocked down or when Lingsha is knocked down, Fuyun disappears. And while Fuyun is on the field, using a skill can increase Fuyun's action count by three. And then technique after using technique immediately summons Fuyun on the start of the next turn and inflicts befog on all enemies lasting for two turns. Now, Lingsha's great, right? But there's a character I kind of hinted at before. That does pretty dang good too. And that's Gallagher. 
Gallagher is the same thing. Lingxia is going to be that healer slash support for break teams. We already have Gallagher, which isn't to say that Gallagher, like Gallagher's kit, just as a four star should be, is not as expansive as Lingxia's, right? But if you have Gallagher, you're already clearing so much of everything as it is. So as it stands, I can't sit here and say that summoning for Lingxia is going to be as big of a benefit as people might think. Now, is Lingxia going to be good for future content as well? 100%. Like, I think that if the content gets stronger, then Lingxia is only going to make your uh, break teams, like, you know, with Firefly, that much better. So, should you summon for Lingxia if you want to make the best break team in the world? Or best break team that you possibly can? Absolutely. But... If you're looking at the bang for your buck, right? You have Natasha, which if you're summoning for Lingxia anyway, there's no point in getting Natasha. But you also get Natasha for free. So there you go. You get Gwenaifen, which is a really, really good Nihility unit and still regarded as decent. But at the same time, like without other Nihility units for the team, I don't think Gwenaifen is going to be hitting as good as, you know, people might think. You have Misha, and Misha, in my opinion, is just terrible for teams. A terrible destruction unit. You know, great backstory, just terrible unit. And then you have Lingxia, who obviously is really, really good, and could, could make your break teams that much better. But at the same time, we already have Gallagher. So to me, this banner is a skip. And I don't like saying that because I do like Lingxia. I think Lingxia is a great character, and I can't wait to build her myself. But I think if you're looking at the benefits of what you can get, you're definitely not getting as much as you might think. So I would say skip Lingxia personally. And then wait to see what Rappa's banner looks like or future banners of the like. Now, of course, if you like the content, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button down below. And if you disagree, let me know in the comments down below. I would love to hear y'all's opinions on this. So, but that's going to be it. Love you all to death. And as always, we'll catch you in the next video. Please take care and be safe.